All right, welcome back. So I wanted to do a video <clears throat> on the ridiculousness of backtick command substitution. Before I do that though, real quick, I just wanted to emphasize or note a peculiarity about IFS or field splitting. <clears throat> so if we've got IFS set to space and colon, and <clears throat> I set a variable with two colons at the beginning, followed by spaces on either side, it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> and then do a print arc v of var, I will get two empty fields at the beginning. So that's for variable or parameter substitution. But if I do the same thing with command substitution, and just so that we don't, since I've already mentioned the ridiculousness of backtick substitution, let's just use regular dollar substitution. If I put two backtick, or two colons at the beginning of this, and just so there's no confusion, I'll put some spaces there, and I'll put another colon at the end here, we only get five total arguments, specifically this beginning bit, there's only one argument at the very beginning here. I don't know why that is. That's probably some kind of bug, maybe, in the corn shell. I can't figure it out because echo, when you're echoing something in single quotes, this will return all one argument and then field splitting will be done on it. If I didn't have quotes here, I might worry that <clears throat> there's something weird going on with the fact that echo separates its arguments into one space or separates its arguments by one space, but I can't figure that out. So <clears throat> anyway, just it's something to be aware of. <laughs> if you're going to have non-IFS white space, which is almost never, and you're doing variable versus command substitution. So just be aware of that. <clears throat> the thing that I really wanna talk about today, which is just kind of interesting and fun, I just like it, is how crazy backtick substitution is. So if you just wanna do a normal backtick substitution, You can do something like this. So we're gonna echo hello, and that's gonna turn all of this command substitution into just a hello. And then this echo is going to see that hello, and it's gonna say, okay, another hello for us. And that'll just output hello. But what if I want to do a nested backtick command substitution. Well, there's a problem here that you don't have with dollar substitution in that what you're delimiting the command substitution with is the same character, right? The start of this is an open parenthesis and the end is a closed parenthesis. So nothing weird really has to happen. But here, <clears throat> what's going on is that if you don't escape this, it will, the shell will think that this is the end of the first command substitution. So what you have to do is put a backslash in front of those. And uh, we get this inner command substitution does an echo hello, which this outer or middle command substitution or outer command substitution in this case, sees as just a hello, it echoes that hello, and then this echo sees just a hello, and we just get a hello. Now, suppose that I have a file named dollar sign. So you can see, oh, did not mean to do that. 
I don't know what I just did. I accidentally clicked something on the button. Okay. So <clears throat> suppose that we have a single dollar sign as a file. And we want to do an ls of that dollar sign inside of backtick substitution. OK, so this is where things get really interesting. Normally, we would just have to, if this weren't inside of backtick substitution, you just have to proceed it with a single backslash. No problem. Easy enough. But if we want to do something like ls dollar sign, what you need to know is that normal quoting rules are applied here. But then the in-between backticks, the shell removes backslashes that come before dollar signs. So what we really need to do here is we need to add three dollar signs. <laughs> or three backslashes in front of this dollar sign. So normal quoting rules will be applied, which will remove this first backslash and this backslash. But then there will also be still left this backslash in front of a dollar sign, which the backtick will then remove again, and we get the normal dollar sign. Now, because the shell also just leaves dollar signs that don't have anything after them that could be interpreted as a parameter, you can just do this. And you can also just do this. And you can also just do this. So anywhere from zero to three backslashes in front of a dollar sign in this situation will just give you a dollar sign. <clears throat> But what if we want to do all of this inside a second redirection? And actually, before I do any of that, I'm going to create a backslash file. So now if I do ls, you'll see that we've got a file that's just called backslash. So what if we want to do this inside of multiple levels of command redirection? So here we go. Now, inside, so every level of backtick expansion does this removal of backslashes after quoting. So after normal quoting rules are applied, you do removal of backslashes before backslash, backslash, backtick, or dollar sign. So <clears throat> this backslash is, when the shell parses this, it needs to find the next unquoted backtick which using normal quoting rules, it determines is this one. And after normal quoting, it's determined that this backslash in front of this backtick will be removed, and this backslash in front of this backtick will be removed. And then <clears throat> this backslash in front of this backslash will be removed. So we'll be left with a backslash in front of a backtick, which will be removed by this outer level of backtick. So in order to get a literal backslash here, we're going to have to put two more backslashes in front of it. So OK, let's go through all of this again. Normal quoting rules are applied. This backslash gets removed. This backslash gets removed. This backslash gets removed. And this backslash gets removed. So we're left with backslash, backslash inside this second level of quoting. OK, and then <laughs> the first backslash, 
So what did I say? This backslash gets removed from normal quoting. This one's removed, this one's removed, and this one's this one's removed. And then backtick backslash removal removes the first, so we're left with just two backslashes. The outer backslash removal or backticks will remove this backslash, so we'll just be left with one backslash, but then that backslash will be in front of a backtick. And so the backslash will be removed again. So we can remedy this in one of two ways. We can put a space there, but then this gets confused because it thinks that I haven't finished, right? There's no, this inner backtick command substitution is going awry. So what we need to do is put a space there. But then the shell, right, it's just seeing a backslash in front of a space, so it's just ex echoing a space. So what we really need to do is add four more backslashes here <coughs> so that, okay, normal quoting will remove this one, this one, this one, and this one. So we'll be left with four backslashes. Okay, and then with four backslashes, this backslash and this backslash will be removed by the outer backtick backslash removal. But then the inner backtick backslash removal will see this and it will remove this backslash. Ah. Accidentally hit back. So now we will actually see a backslash echoed. And you can imagine that this gets kind of crazy. It, the farther, the deeper you go in nested backtick removal. So if you wanna do three levels of command substitution, or of nested command substitution, so we've got an echo, and then we need to end this inner one. With this backslash backslash backtick. But then if we want to do an another nested level, we need to do three backticks because Normal quoting rules determine that, okay, when we see this, okay, just to prove that this works, here, that's how you do that. So what's happening here is this first backtick goes through its quoting rules. And so normal quoting is applied to this whole line. And that will remove this backslash, this backslash and this backslash, this backslash and this backslash, and this backslash. So <clears throat> the way this works then is that this command sees this backslash and or backtick and this backtick and says, okay, everything between that is my command, okay? And then inside of that, we have just a single backtick because quoting removal has already removed it. And then we've got a backslash backtick and another backslash backtick. So inside of this first level, the command sees a command substitution here and here. But because of backtick removal, this backslash that is inside of this outer backslash is going to get removed. So we'll see a command with nested command levels. So I, I feel like I'm doing a terrible job of explaining this, but the ultimate rule is that for nested levels of backtick substitution, for the first level, you need one backslash. 
So, okay, the first level, I guess, maybe we'll call this the first level, you need zero backslashes. Then you need one backslash. Then you need three backslashes. What about another level? Well, you need seven backslashes in front of the back tick. Now, why is that? Well, first of all, you've got to remember that quoting rules are going to eliminate four of these, right? So we're going to be left with just three. Okay, so one, two, three, four, those are all going to get removed. Okay, so you're just going to be left with three. And then the successive levels of backtick backslash removals will handle the rest. So just look at how insane that is. And then if we need to echo like a literal backslash in here, oh, I shudder to think. Okay, so <clears throat> if we were in here, normal quoting would remove half of the backslashes. And then this would remove another half. So inside of the first level, we would need four backslashes, okay? And that means that in here, we're gonna need eight backslashes. In here, we would need 16 backslashes. So in here, we're gonna need 32 backslashes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 For 32 backslashes just to get a single backslash right here. So long story short, don't use backtick expansion for command substitution if you need nested command substitution, if you need to escape or quote anything, don't use it. Just use dollar sign and parentheses because normal quoting rules apply, right? If I want to do this with normal, well, or with this version, okay, so how many echoes do we have? We've got one on the outside, two, three, four, five. One on the outside, two, three, four, five. And then if I want a regular backslash in here, I just have to escape it normally. So. Just use dollar sign parentheses for nested command substitution. <laughs> it's way, way less ridiculous. And the only thing that you have to remember is this bug that is listed at the very end, which is if you're going to do case statements inside of these command expressions, then just use this option that you have with case statements that you can prepend patterns with an optional parenthesis so that you don't have unmatching parentheses and you don't trigger this bug. And that's the only thing that you need to remember. So if you're gonna be doing anything other than just bare bones command substitution, don't use backticks. It'll make your life way easier. And it's nice when things are easy. So, <clears throat> and just to make this totally ridiculous, let's eliminate this space just so that we can have craziness. Anyway, that's it for this video. Hit like if you liked it. Hit dislike if you didn't like it. Leave a comment down below in either case, letting me know why. And uh, if you got questions, criticisms, concerns, I mean, other than the concern for the well-being of my sanity because I decided to go down this backtick substitution rabbit hole, leave a comment for that as well. And uh, if you want to see when I post new videos, hit subscribe. Thanks. Peace.